recently, many people have the fear of traveling abroad, especially because of all the horror stories that we are hearing happening at the Philippine immigration at the airport. Now, I know, I know our officers, our immigration officers, they do have a tough job. I mean, they're trying to keep out all these people who are traveling illegally or uh, there are human trafficking going on and things like that. And so they do have a very difficult job on their hands and uh, we need to pray for them. However, whenever we hear about all these stories about how people are being detained, they miss their flights or they have to cancel their entire vacation or maybe worse that they will have to have their passport canceled, we do get scared, right? And uh, they have to bring all, we were bringing all these documents with us, uh, even our yearbook, our grade five report cards, our family pictures and all that all because we want to make sure that we will pass the Philippine immigration. However, you know that there is something that is even more serious than not, than not passing the Philippine immigration going abroad. It is on that final day when we stand at the cusp of eternity and when, when one hand is eternal damnation and the other hand is eternal happiness in the presence of the Lord, where would you go? Where would you go? Well, I, I know, I know you know, and I know that you know, it's all about faith, right? As long as I believe, if I have faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, then I'm certain I would go to heaven. However, I want to ask you a question. Do you know if you have the right kind of faith? What I mean is I don't want you to stand there at the final day and to realize that you have had the wrong kind of faith all along. You do not have the genuine faith that is needed to enter into heaven. Now you may ask, what do you mean, pastor? As long as I have faith, I will be saved, right? What do you mean the wrong kind of faith? Because in Luke chapter 18, verse 15 to 17, Jesus talked about the need to have the right kind of faith. The way we receive the kingdom of God must be in the right way or else Jesus says that we will never enter the kingdom of God. So friends, this is very serious. This is a very serious topic because if we get it wrong, if we get it incorrectly, then we would not enter heaven. So let us read this passage very carefully and make sure that we know and that we have the right kind of faith. Luke chapter 18, verse 15 to 17. People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Truly I tell you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Did you read the last part, the last verse? That's very important. Let's see that again. Truly, Jesus said, it means verily, verily, I say unto you, anyone who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Wow. So let us be, think about this. Let's think about this. This is very serious. Now, first of all, why would the disciples keep little babies, okay, little children away from Jesus? Perhaps it's because of the way people back then look at little children. Because back then, little children, babies, they're not counted. I mean, they're useless. They would just be bothering the master. And so the disciples were keeping them away. You know, back then, when they count people, the number of attendees, they don't count the women and the children. Remember the feeding of the 5,000? It's 5,000 men. It was 5,000 men who were fed. The children and the women were not counted. And so the disciples may be looking at little children and say, well, wait till they grow up first. You know, they're, they're not like us. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. And you know, you guys are just babies. Okay, shoo, shoo, go away, go away. Wait till you're all grown up. That's when you come to the master. But Jesus said, Jesus said, no, no, it's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. Don't wait for them to grow up. Okay, children have a place in my kingdom. Unlike the Chinese culture, right? In the Chinese culture, we have this saying called uhi bo sui. Okay, literally means little children, they have ears, but they don't have mouths. It means that little children should just sit there, be quiet and listen, but you should never talk back. Is that what the disciples were thinking? Perhaps. But Jesus turned it around. Instead of saying, wait till the babies grow up, Jesus is saying to all the people there, including his disciples, 
that you guys need to grow down. You guys need to become like little children or else you will not enter the kingdom of God. Now, we may be looking at the disciples and say, why would they do that? But if you think about it, we're the same. We're the same. We tend to look up on those people who are successful, who are powerful, who are wealthy, who have status in life, who have power. We want to be like them. Just look at little children. They want to grow up to become billionaires. They want to grow up to be the president. They want to grow up to be the first one to invent something. They want to be people who are great. Few, if any of us, ever aims to become like little children. I mean, have you ever heard of people saying, well, one day when I grow up, I want to be like a baby. No, we don't hear that, right? No, nobody says that. Nobody will want to become a baby. And yet, that is exactly what Jesus said we should be. He said, unless your faith, unless the way you receive the kingdom of God is like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of God. So the main idea is this, that having the right kind of faith, which according to Jesus must be childlike faith, without that, without that, you will not enter the kingdom of God. It is necessary that we have the right kind of faith in order to enter the kingdom of God. Now, of course, Jesus doesn't mean that we become childish, okay? We are to be childlike. So what, what are the characteristics of a childlike faith? So I thought about it and I researched it and I came up with a long list. Okay, I'm going to give, show you the list. It's uh, in alphabetical order. I came up with 28, 28 characteristics of childlike faith. They are carefree, creative, curious, dependent, energetic, forgiving, fun-loving, honest, hopeful, humble, imaginative, innocent, inquisitive, insistent, joyful, loving, malleable, open, playful, positive, Pure, simple, spontaneous, transparent, trusting, uncomplicated, vulnerable, wonder. Now, so buckle up your seat because uh, we're going to go for a 28-point sermon. You better get that big cup of coffee ready. It's going to be a long one. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's not going to be a 28-point sermon. I'm not that cruel, okay? I'm kidding. However, it made me think you know so okay with with all these characteristics of childlike faith which ones were Je was jesus referring to i mean it can be all of them right so which ones was jesus referring to what did he mean by child by childlike faith as i was praying through the list i noticed that in verse 15 there's that one small word it says also people were also bringing babies to jesus also the word also shows that this verse is connected to the previous verse. So something were happening, Jesus was talking about all these stories, and then people were also bringing babies to Jesus. And so I realized that this story is connected to the context, and that's the rule that we need to use whenever we interpret the Bible. The golden rule of Bible interpretation, context. What's the context? of this childlike faith that Jesus was talking about. This story about childlike faith is sandwiched among three stories in, in Luke chapter 18. And by contrasting childlike faith against these three stories, I believe we can come to the right conclusion of which characteristics Jesus was referring to. Verse 1 to 8 of chapter 18 was talking about the persistent widow. And then verse 9 to 14 was about the prayers of the tax collector and the Pharisee. And then verse 18 to 30 was talking about the rich young ruler. I believe we will see which characteristics of childlike faith we need to have by contrasting it against these three stories. So let's, let's go through them first. The first characteristic that we need to have by contrasting childlike faith against the first story, and that is the story of the persistent widow, we come to see that the characteristics we need, the characteristic we need to have is to have implicit trust. Implicit trust. Recall in the story of the persistent widow who kept coming back to the unrighteous judge, what was the point of Jesus? The point of Jesus was if a bad judge would do this for a persistent widow, a helpless, powerless widow, how much more? How much more would your heavenly father who loves you and who is very good, how much more a good father would of course give the ultimate good gifts 
to his children. So what your heavenly father will give to you will ultimately be for your good. Therefore, the kind of trust, the kind of faith we need to have, the childlike faith, is to trust. An implicit trust, meaning unquestioned, meaning you don't even have to think about it. It's unconditional, unquestioned, absolute, radical, full, dependent type of trust in the father. You know, little children, they trust their parents implicitly. They, they, they just trust because they, they know that they need to be fully dependent on their parents for love and support. Everything, they trusted them implicitly without overthinking or questioning. Have you, heard, have you ever heard little children says, my daddy is the best. My daddy is the best dad in the whole wide world. Or my mommy loves me very much. How completely you believe in him, how completely you trust in God. It should be like that of a little child. And how do we see that? How do we see this implicit trust in the father is in how quickly we obey. How quickly, how completely we obey his commands shows how much we trust him. I know many of you have heard of this story, but it's a story about Jack. He was uh, taking a shortcut at night through the forest going back home. It was late at night. It was a moonless night. And uh, as he was in a hurry, he took a misstep and he fell over a deep ravine. He was falling down, tumbling down, and he couldn't see anything. He was so scared, but finally he was able to hold on to, to a tree, tree branch, okay, sticking out of the cliff. He was so scared and he looked down, couldn't see anything. He looked up, he could not see anything. And he knew that he could not hang on for long. And so he started to call for help. Help, help, anybody, help. But it was uh, in the middle of the forest, in the middle of the night. And so no one was there. He kept shouting, help, help, but no one came. Eventually, even though he did not believe in God, he started to call on God. He says, God, God, is there a God up there? Okay, anybody help? And then he heard a voice saying, Jack, hello, Jack, are you okay? <gasps> Who's that? And God said, well, it's God. You called me, didn't you? Oh, yes, God, God, oh, Lord, please, please help me, help me. Help me get, get off this branch. I'm so scared, I'm so scared, help me. All right, Jack, let's get you down from there. Okay, listen carefully to what I say. Oh, Lord, anything. I'll do anything you ask me to do. I'll, I'll go to MGC every Sunday. I'll give so much. And God says, okay, hold on, hold on. Hold on with all the promises, Jack. Let's just get you down from that, from that place and then we'll talk afterward. Jack said, okay, Lord, okay, God. Tell me, tell me what to do. Anything, anything, I'll do it. And God, and God said, okay, Jack, I want you to let go. Let go? What do you mean, Lord, let go? Yes, I want you to trust me. Let go. And Jack thought about it and thought about it. He did not want to fall down again. It was so scary. He did not want to fall again. And so after thinking, it for, thinking over it for a long, long time, finally Jack took a deep, long breath and said, Help, help! Is there any other God up there? Help, help! He would not let go. He would not let go. And so for 30 minutes, he was just hanging there, his voice becoming more and more faint because he was losing strength. His hands were shaking. He could not hang on anymore. And then it was at that very moment, he saw from a distance, it was like a car was coming up the hill. And then the, the headlights somehow turned towards him. And then he saw that he was only six inches off the ground. Only six inches off the ground. If he had just let go, he would have been fine. He would have been fine. How often our God tells us, our Lord, our Father, our good, good Father, tells us to do things and then we don't trust Him. We're afraid. We're afraid. We do not trust Him. And therefore, we're not the, we don't have the childlike faith. Because childlike faith, we trust implicitly. If God says, let go, we let go. If God says, do this, we do it because we believe in Him. We trust in Him. This is why our working definition of faith has always been this. Faith is believing in Jesus, believing Him to be who He says He is. And because we believe Him to be who He says He is, we're committing to obey everything that He says. Because we believe in Him, we would obey. Okay, we would obey. We're committed to trust and obey everything that he says. 
You know, by God's grace, I was called into full-time ministry at the tender age of 11. When I was 11 years old, uh, I joined a youth camp, and from then on, I never looked back. After finishing elementary, high school, and then went to college, after college, immediately went to the seminary, and after seminary, I became a pastor. No looking back. It was just one after another. I knew that's what God wanted me to do, and I just did it. But you know what? Along with me, uh, not just I dedicated myself full-time to the Lord, Many of my classmates in high school, they also dedicated full-time. But one after another, many of them, you know, delayed. They said, well, let me go find a job first. Let me have a family first. And, and they delayed and delayed. And the longer they delayed, the, the less willing they were willing to, to step out by faith. It, it became harder and harder because they got older and they had more responsibilities now. They, they, they were thinking more. And so they fail to trust. Do you trust God at his words? What steps of faith is he asking you to take? Are you willing to do it? Childlike faith, first of all, is to have implicit trust. Secondly, childlike faith, in contrast to the second story, the story of the Pharisee and the tax collector as they were praying in the temple. We just talked about this the last time, so I, I think this is still fresh in our minds. What was required? True humility. True humility. Childlike faith, the second characteristic that we need to have is to have true humility. What we need is to be justified in God's sight by having true humility. It means to see ourselves, to see oneself correctly. Who are we? We are sinners saved by grace. Yes, we're all sinners. We are sinners saved by grace. Therefore, I have nothing to boast about. I, I, I don't have to compare with others because, because it's not me. And I realize even the good things that I'm able to do, the, the, the service that I'm able to perform for Him, they all came about, they all come about as a result of my relationship with the Father. And so I have nothing to boast about. I need to have true humility. Unlike the Pharisee, a child, a baby, has nothing to boast about. He cannot boast that he fasts, you know, uh, two times a week that he gives a tenth of all he has? No, a child has nothing to boast. Childlike faith is humble faith. And that's the kind of faith that we need to have. The ki that kind of faith is the faith that saves, is like a child believing in Jesus, simply because Jesus says it. They would say, I know God loves me. I know Jesus loves me. This I know. Why? Because the Bible tells me so. Just because it says so, just because the Bible says it, I believe him. You know, there are many people who do not want to come to the Lord, who do not believe in Jesus because they know too much. They, they have read, they have thought about, they have studied, and they feel that they know better than the Bible. They, they trust their minds, okay? They, they know a lot, and they, be, they don't believe what the Bible is saying. Now, I'm not saying that, therefore, we don't use our minds when we love God. We do need to love God with all our mind. But the point here is that sometimes we give too much credit to our own thinking. We give too much credit to what I think and what I like and what I believe. And we say, that is correct, okay? Well, as long as, as I like it, I believe it, I think it's right, then it's right, then I believe it. We assume that what I think, what we think is always correct. It's a condition called PDS, okay, PDS. Many men have that. I think I have that also. PDS is a condition that I give to the perfect driver syndrome, PDS. Why? Because we always feel that I'm the best driver. Anyone drives faster than me, that's crazy. Anyone drives slower than I do, that's foolishness. That guy is stupid. And we think that I am the perfect driver. In the same way, when we come to studying the Bible, studying who God is, uh, if I don't like this, I don't like, you know, a God who is like that. I don't like how he's acting and nah, I cannot accept this because I don't like it. We make ourselves to be the standards of right and wrong. We feel that if I don't like it, if I don't feel that it's just, if I don't feel that it's right, then it is not right. We make ourselves to be that standard. What we need is to have childlike faith in terms of true humility. We when we are humble like little children, you know what will happen? When we are willing to put ourselves down below, under the teaching of God's word, then that's when God would reveal his truth to us. Yes, it's, it's kind of funny if you think about it, because 
like in Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, verse 25 to 26, Jesus said this. Jesus said, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. God is pleased when we humble ourselves, when we say, all right, I, I will accept, I will try to understand, I will try to receive God's word at its face value. I would receive it like a little child. That's when God will reveal His truth to us. But when we feel that we're good, when we are so proud of our own knowledge, when we think I am the standard, then God will not reveal His truth to us. So the second characteristic that we need to have as a child, to have childlike faith, is to have true humility. And the third one is to have carefree simplicity. The third story is one that we will study next, okay? So in a way, this is sort of a preview. It's about the rich young ruler who came to Jesus because he wanted to let Jesus know that he is one among the very few people who can really say, I have kept the law perfectly. Since I was a child, to, to honor my parents, to keep the Sabbath holy, to not lie, to not cheat, all that I've done since I was a child. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm good candidate for heaven. I should be accepted into heaven. What was Jesus' answer to him? Jesus said, all right, if you want to be perfect, sell everything that you have, give to the poor, and follow me. And it was so easy for him. He sold everything he had, and he willingly followed Jesus because it was so easy for him. No, no, that's not what the Bible says. Okay, next week, next time, when we see, this to the, see the passage in Luke 18, verse 18 to 30, we realize that it was actually very hard. It was very hard for this rich young ruler. Why? Because he had a lot. Luke said, because he was very wealthy. Because of his wealth, because he had so much, it was not easy for him to give up. You see, the more that you have, the harder it will be to give up. The less that you have, the easier it will be to give it all up to follow Jesus. It's easy when you have nothing to lose. But when you have a lot to lose, then it becomes very hard. I think this is why we often joke that, you know, parents, when they have two, three children, they will say, all right, this one, you know, he always fails his subject, doesn't, uh, doesn't have a job and things like that. Okay, okay, you go and be a pastor. But this one, no, 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 not this one. You know, he's going to be a scientist. He's going to be a doctor. He's going to be a lawyer, engineer. No, no, no. Sayang, if he becomes a pastor. You know, this one is, you know, he will make good money. But this other one, it's okay. All right. He can go. Childlike faith is, is the, the beauty of childlike faith is in, in their simplicity. Their carefree simplicity. They're not weighed down by all the things of this world. Children are free to live in the present with no concern for the future. I mean, they're not, they have no worries about a bank account. They have no worries about you know, making the next doctor's appointment. They don't worry about the gas prices going up. They don't worry about the war in the Middle East. They don't worry about politics in the office or what people think about them. No, they don't worry about all those things. They can focus on, on the moment. They can enjoy the moment without being entangled by all these complications of life. And the older we get, the more we are holding on to things, the harder it will be to, to let go. Do you know how to catch a monkey? I know, I know, it's hard enough to catch a chicken. How do you catch a monkey? Uh, you know, monkeys, they, they run around all over the place, they're so fast. How do you catch a monkey? Uh, they, they say they, they use a coconut or some container with a small hole and they put a goodie inside, okay, some, some fruits or something that monkeys like. And what they would do is they would reach out, reach with their hand into that hole, just big enough for their hands to go through. And they would grab onto the thing, but once they hold on to whatever is inside, they will not be able to come out. The only way for them to be released is to let go, is to let go of the things, that's when they can be free. And yet a monkey will not let go, okay? He will hold on to it. Even if you come to, to catch him, he will still hold on. He would not let go. Are you willing to let go? Are you willing to live a more simple life, or a life that is unencumbered by the complexities and all the doubts and all the things of this world in order to follow Jesus? You see, many of us, we have many what ifs. You know, what, what, what if I, what if this happens? What if I follow the Lord and this happens? 
And what we need is to have the carefree simplicity of a childlike faith. I know some people will say, but wait a minute, Pastor, this is dangerous. It's, it's dangerous for you to say that, to have that kind of faith, because it's foolish. It's foolish to, to have a childlike faith like that. And, and you're teaching our young people to think that way, to, to just throw away their future and, and bahalana and just follow the Lord. Well, I'm not saying that we become, you know, just, just don't mind everything. But this is what the Lord is saying, that we should have childlike faith faith in its simplicity in its simplicity in first corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 to 10 paul was talking to the to the believers in corinth because they were becoming proud of who they were and what they could accomplish and this was what paul said to them in verse 10 paul says we are fools for christ yeah but you are so wise in christ we are weak you are strong we are honored you are honored we are dishonored what paul was saying is that okay you think you're better? You think that, you know, you're, you're, you're good with all these things? Okay, we are willing to become fools for Christ. We're willing to become fools for Christ. If you think about it, wasn't Abraham a fool for leaving his family, his people, his land to go to an unknown place all based on a promise? Wasn't Moses a fool for going back to Egypt, to the palace, to, to the very person who was who wanted him killed to the most powerful pharaoh and the, and the ruthless ruler of Egypt. Wasn't Joshua a fool for crossing a river at flood stage to conquer a land filled with giants? But you know what? I think crossing the Jordan is one thing. What's even more foolish is if he fails to conquer all these giants, he would have no way back, okay? Because at his back would be this overflowing river that is at flood stage. Wasn't young David a fool? for facing a nine foot tall giant, coming at him with heavy armor and a big javelin, while all he had were a few smooth stones and a sling. You know, smooth stones, they were not even jagged or you know, stones that can, that can stab people, only five smooth stones. Wasn't Nehemiah a fool for leaving the palace to go to a, to a place thousands of kilometers away and to, re, to rebuild a wall that was broken for centuries? How about Elijah? Wasn't he a fool thinking to trust ravens to bring, him, to bring him meat to eat and to trust a brook to bring him water during a famine? Wasn't Peter, the fisherman, a fool for stepping into the water under a raging storm, knowing full well he's a fisherman, he knows that he would die if he steps into the water? Wasn't Paul a fool? For, for going to Jerusalem, knowing full well that there are people there dying to kill him, hell-bent on killing him. Well, that's childlike faith. Childlike faith is what is required for us to enter the kingdom of God. What is he requiring of you today? I know, I know, having childlike faith does seem like foolishness in the eyes of the world. It doesn't make sense, but it's clear that Jesus wants us to grow down to become like little children. To have what kind of faith? To have a faith that has implicit trust, complete trust that comes from a real relationship with the Father. To have true humility, knowing that I'm a sinner saved by grace, I have nothing to boast about. And to have a faith that is simple, carefree simplicity, not be bogged down by the things of this world, but to simply trust in God and to follow Him. That is the kind of faith that we need to have in order that we would enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence. Help us, Lord, to reflect and to examine our faith, to see if we truly have the right kind of faith, a faith that has childlike quality, like what you would like us to have. May we learn to have childlike faith so that we simply trust in you. We know that you are a good, good father. And therefore, we believe in you and we trust in you. By so doing, we honor your name and we truly are your children. Help us, Lord, to continue to trust in you. This is our prayer. In Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen.